In this next video, I'm going to talk about how architects find inspiration in nature. I'm going to talk about bubble soaps, butterfly wings, anemones, and a lot of other natural organisms that they have served like inspiration for, for architects. But first of all, regarding previous video, I would like to make like a difference between mimicry and biomimicry. They are two completely different things. Mimicry is, is just about copy, just copying the shape of a fish that making a building with the shape of the fish. And um, biomimicry is just finding inspiration in how a fish works, how is its behavior. So I'm going to start talking about an amazing architect, that a German architect that's called Frey Otto. I think it's this type of architect that for my that I really, from my personal point of view, I really uh, love them because they are architects that they are in a kind of no man's land. I don't know if they are architects or biologists or they are urbanism. I'm not sure about it, but that's probably the best thing about them. Fred Yoto used to work with an uh, evolutionary biologist called Ulrich Kuhl, and probably because of this collaboration, he reached with a different type of designs that I think they are a great inspiration for the rest of the architects. For example, once he studied how the bubble of the bubble soaps, they, how they work, how were the shape, how it was like superficial tensions, he analyzed it and after he designed a kind of pneumatic festival hall. If you compare both, I think that the, f the hall, the festival hall, could never be designed as it was if you don't study the bubble soap. So there's like a, bit, a deep relation, like I said before. He didn't copy the shape, he just copied its behavior, why the superficial tension of a bubble soap works, and that could be an inspiration for an architect. Then, uh, Freyot also was really uh, impressed with trunks, with butterfly wings, and a lot of natural organism. But he's not the only architect working like that. There's not a lot. There are a lot of architects that they can find inspiration in, in natural environment, but just thinking about in its ideas, not like, I repeat again, not copying its shape. For example, Japanese architect Toyo Ito, uh, he was really impressed with sea water, like me. <laughs> because he loved the way that the sea weeds move, and he loved the anemones, how it was their behavior. They weren't just one unique organism. They were like multiple organisms that they were together. So if we analyze the design that Toyo Ito did for the Sendai Mediatek, we can see the first sketch that we are not sure if that sketch it looks like a seaweed or like anemones, or it's a kind of building, it's a kind of architecture design. I don't think it's one or the other, I think it's just in the middle. That is case it just shows the process of how you pass from a seaweed to a building. So the second, the first, the next step that Toyo Ito did was to try to analyze how was the structural behavior of the seaweeds and the anemones. And that's why he designed this kind of amazing building where the main structure of the building is a kind of similar behavior than the anemones. It's not just a structure. It's look, the light and the mobility system of the building it comes inside. And when you look at it, you're not sure if you're looking to a building or you're looking to the first picture of the seaweeds that we saw at the beginning. So, just I encourage you to look in a different way the natural environment that we have around. It's a great opportunity for design. It's a great opportunity for finding inspiration. Next video, I will talk about how architects find inspiration in other technologies far away from architecture. I will talk about oil rigs, Royal Coaster, Catamarans, and other amazing technologies.